Hi everyone, I have got my February books of the month. I know we're like halfway through March and here I am opening my February books, but you know how that is. But anyway, I am so glad that you're here. I hope that you stick around and share these books with me and I would love to hear your thoughts on them. So I hope that you stick around and join me. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to have you guys stop in and spend a few minutes of your day with me. It means more to me than I can ever let you know. So thank you everyone from the bottom of my heart. If you are new to my channel, I hope that you would consider hitting that little red subscribe button over there. I would love to have you join us for future videos. And today we're going to be doing my book of the month club for February. Yeah, I know it's the middle of March. I'm a little behind, but I do have two books in here. Um, I'll have my link below as well in case it's something you are interested in. And I'm kind of unsure how that first book works. I know some people say when they use my link, they got the first book for $9. Some people said they got it for $5. So maybe it just depends on whatever promotion the book of the month club is running. But after that, your book will be $14.99. Uh, shipping is free. Um, they used to give you five books of the month to choose from. Now they give you seven to choose from. Um, it's easy enough to just hit skip if there's nothing that interests you or you're just falling behind on your reading like some of us are falling behind on opening new boxes too. Uh, you can hit skip or you can pick something from the vast uh, library. They've got a huge, huge library of books to choose from as well. So for February... And I have no idea, but sometimes you get credits, and I don't know how I get credits, but yeah, so I picked my book at the month club, and then I also had a credit, so, but it doesn't say that anyone used my link, so I don't know, but, so I picked one with my free credit as well, so I have two books to choose from that I chose, so I'm excited to do that for you, and uh, just uh, going to have a little Pinot Grigio here, so cheers everyone, I hope that everyone had a great week. And yeah, so I've got my sip and savor that I just got, uh, this uh, Bloom and Blossom. So that subscription for March. Just got a little bit in the glass. So hope everyone had a great week. Cheers. And a great weekend. And to a great week ahead. It's light. It's refreshing. It's really a nice Pinot Grigio. It is a little tart like apples or something, maybe citrus, maybe lemon. It's really, really good. Alrighty. And that's because I have to have wine because it says right here. And that's what I do. I read books, I drink wine, and I know things. So anyway, for the books that I didn't choose, like I said, it's sometimes really, really hard to choose. But from the one that I didn't pick, it was a historical fiction. It was called Don't Cry For Me by Daniel Black. And so it is, what do you say to someone you loved but failed? Here, a father uses letters to express his love for his strange son. As Jacob lies dying, he begins to write letters to his only son, Isaac. They have not met or spoken to in many years, and there are things Isaac must know. Stories about his ancestral legacy in rural Arkansas that extend back to slavery. Secrets from Jacob's tumultuous relationship with Isaac's mother and the shame he carries from the dissolution of their family. Tragedies that informed Jacob's role as a father and his reaction to Isaac's being gay. But most of all, Jacob must share with Isaac the unspoken truths that reside in his heart. He must give voice to the trauma that Isaac has inherited, and he must create a space for the two to find peace. With piercing insight and profound empathy, acclaimed author Daniel Black illuminates the lived experiences of Black fathers and queer sons, offering an authentic and ultimately hopeful portrait of reckoning and reconciliation. Spare as it is sweeping, poetic as it is compulsive, compulsively readable, Don't Cry For Me is a monumental novel about one's family grappling with love's hard edges and the unexpected places where hope and healing 
take flight. So again, that one did sound really good. This sounds like a really dramatic story. Something's going to be a little tear jerking at times. This, this next one, it's a thriller called The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen or Pekinen. So it's a twisty tale of a therapist with unconventional methods trying to unlock the mystery of a perfect marriage. If Avery Chambers can't fix you in 10 sessions, she won't take you on as a client. Her successes are phenomenal. She helps people overcome everything from domineering parents to assault and almost absorb the emptiness she sometimes feels since her husband's death. Marissa and Matthew Bishop seem like the golden couple until Marissa cheats. She wants to repair things, but be, both because she loves her husband and for the sake of their eight-year-old son. After a friend forwards an article about Avery, Marissa takes a chance on this maverick therapist who lost her license due to controversial methods. When the bishops glide through Avery's door and Marissa reveals her infidelity, all three are sent on a collision course because the biggest secrets in the room are still hidden. It's no longer simply a marriage that's in danger. Alrighty, so didn't that one sound good? Alrighty, so this this next one is another historical fiction, and it's Peach Blossom Spring by Melissa Few. So it says it's a multi-generational epic, traces the enthralling story of a mother and son who journey from China to America. Within every misfortune, there is a blessing, and with every blessing, the seeds of misfortune, and so it goes until the end of time. In 1938 in China, as a young wife, Meilan's future is bright, but with the Japanese army approaching, Meilan and her four-year-old son, Renshu, are forced to flee their home, relying on little but their wits and a beautifully illustrated hand scroll filled with ancient fables that offer solace and wisdom. They have traveled through their ravaged country, sinking refuge. Years later, Renshu has settled in America as Henry Dow. Though his daughter is desperate to understand her heritage, he refuses to talk about his childhood. How can he keep his family safe in this new land when the weight of his history threatens to drag them down? Yet how can Lily learn who she is if she can never know her family's history? Spanning continents and generations, Peach Blossom Spring is a bold and moving and moving, not moving, moving look at the history of modern China told through the story of one family. It's about the power of the past, the hope for a better future, and the haunting question and question, what would it mean to finally be home? Again, that one sounded like another great book. Alrighty, so this next one that I also didn't choose is a literary fiction called Vladimir by Julia May Jonas. So it says it's darkly humorous exploration of gender and power, and it follows a cantankerous female professor in the midst of a scandal. When I was a child, I loved old men, and I could also tell that they loved me. And so we are introduced to our deliciously incisive narrator, a popular English professor whose charismatic husband at the same small liberal arts college is under investigation for his inappropriate relationships with his foreign former students. The couple has had a long mutual understanding when it comes to the extramarital pursuits. But with these new allegations, life has become far less comfortable for them both. And when our narrator becomes increasingly infatuated with Vladimir, a celebrated married young novelist who's just arrived on campus, their tinderbox world comes dangerously close to exploding. 
with a bold, edgy, and uncommonly assured debut, author Julia May Jonas takes us into charged territory with the bound boundaries of morality bump up against the impulses of the human heart. Propulsive, darkly funny, and wildly entertaining, Vladimir perfectly captures the personal and political minefield of our current moment, exposing the nuances and the gray area between power and desire. Alrighty, another great book. So anyway, on to the books that I chose. So let me not knock over those candles and open up the box. I know, finally it's an unboxing. Here I am, you know, half hour in and I'm finally opening up the box. So you've got great taste. So let me dump these books out. I'm going to try to empty out and dump these books out. That was harder than it looked. It really was. You're always going to get a bookmark too for book of the month. And BRB ignoring my responsibilities. So like I said, you always get a little bookmark with a little saying. Alrighty, so this is a big book, right? So this is called A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. And it's a fantasy book because I want to try to change up my thrillers and things like that and mysteries. So I'm going to try to get into fantasies here. So, and it kind of reads like it could be a mystery too. So anyway, this is going to be the first in the series. So I think that's too why I picked this one, because if I like this book, I know that she's going to make a couple more books maybe to continue with this. So yeah, I'm excited about that. It's over 400 pages. It says it's a slow build, first in the series, and it's a quest. Alrighty. So it says unexplained disappearances draw a reluctant hero back to his island home to confront spirits in this spellbinding tale. A River Enchanted is an exhilarating journey into a richly realized world of myth, magic, and alliances. Old and new, forged for good, and sometimes ill, it imaginatively explores classic themes of duty, honor, and going home again. Its characters are fully realized and you will find yourself willingly, nay, eagerly following them through dark, unsettling forest and into the midst of those who may be friend or foe. When Jack Tamerlane is summoned to the magical island of Cadence, he returns to the island home he was forced to leave when he was just 11 years old. Now a scholar and teacher, he takes leave from his job to make the journey home to Cadence, crossing the treacherous, treacherous Malefant waters, but it only it is only then that he learns the true reason for his return. Drawn again into the world of enemies, dark spirits, and truths hidden behind magic, lies, and old family secrets, he must join forces with a former childhood rival to solve the mysterious disappearance of young girls on the island. With her adult debut, Rebecca Ross proves herself one of our master world biz builders and storytellers. This book is a delightful, perfectly paced read and will easily become a favorite read for readers of fantasy. All right, so that does, doesn't that sound good? I mean, it still sounds like it's like a mystery, kind of sounds like a thriller, but maybe with the magic forces, that's what makes it a mystery. I mean, a fantasy. So this another one, well, it's another fantasy. And this one is by Susanna Clark. And I'm probably gonna butcher that name. It's Pyrrhicine, or Pyrrhicine. This one's a little bit shorter. All right, but this one just really sounds really super good too. So this one says, uh, of course, fantasy, piranacy, or however you say it, by Susanna Clark. And I should probably take a sip to wet my whistle. Cheers. Mmm, so good. Okay, so this one says, focus, please. Let's see if it's going to focus. Okay, I think I'm focused. Enter a strange, magical, curious world 
that feels like a dizzying dream and you won't want to wake up from. Perisone's home is no ordinary building. Its rooms are infinite, its corridors endless. Its walls are lined with thousands upon thousands of statues, each one different from all the others. Within the labyrinth of halls, an ocean is imprisoned. Waves thunder up staircases. Rooms are flooded in an instant. But Pyrenees, or Perisone, I should just say, Piri, um, is not afraid. He understands the tides as he understands the pattern of the labyrinth itself. He lives to explore the house. There is one other person in the house, a man called the other, who visits Piranesi twice a week and asks for help with research into a great and secret knowledge. But as Piranesi explores, evidence emerges of another person and a terrible truth begins to unravel revealing a world beyond the one Perisone has always, always known. Reading Perisone is like putting together a puzzle without the image on the box as a reference. You know there's a bigger picture, but you can't quite make it out until certain pieces fall into place. I reveled in each uncovering scrap of information, hoarding clues, until I reached that satisfying moment of revelation, a mystery embedded in a fantastical setting. Piranesi is a book for the puzzle solvers and dreamers alike. Alrighty, so yeah, so those were the two choices after, you know, five hours of reading the previous some of the books. So I'm excited to catch up with my reading. I don't know which book I want to finish first. I've started one a couple of weeks ago and I think I'm only on page 10 because I keep falling asleep by the time I sit down. But I'm excited to do these ones. I'm excited for this River Enchanted knowing that if I like it there's going to be more in the series that I can add on to it. Um, but I like this one because it looks like a shorter book and it just sounds interesting. I can't imagine like living in like an old cave or a tunnel maybe Maybe it's like Atlantis, the city that sunk or was flooded over and someone's actually living there and the tides come and go and you got to keep moving so you don't drown. It just sounds magical. But anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for stopping in, spending time with me. If you've read any of these books without any spoilers, I would love to hear your thoughts on them. Even the books that I didn't get, if those are ones you get. I would love to hear what your thoughts, so I should know if I should put them on my TBR list. And yeah, it's just, I can't wait to get back and find the time to get into this magical world of reading and just getting whisked off into a fantasy world. So anyway, thanks so much again. I love you guys so much and I appreciate you stopping in and spending time with me so much. And I think I'm probably getting close to that 15 minutes of my limit. So. I want to thank you guys again so much. I hope you guys go out. Have a great day. And we will all chat again soon. Love you guys. Bye-bye.